Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Good evening. Welcome back here to another night. Well, it's Thursday night, November 6, 2025. Friday tomorrow. Looking forward to that. 10.48 p.m. California time here. Latest activity on the earthquake 3D globe shows a 2.7 earthquake uh, way up north here. Quite a bit of clustering still going on around the... Uh, Turkey area, also 3.1 it looks like in the Philippines. We'll get to the uh, earthquake activity here in just a second. Um, we are expecting a G3 solar storm tonight, uh, which could happen here at any time. As of right now here, West Coast time, just about 11 p.m. Um, looking at the data real quick, I'll show you guys. The high speed solar wind stream is definitely ramped up here. Uh, looks like it is at or above the 800 level, which is considerably fast. There's a little bit of plasma density increasing as well, but I don't think this is the brunt of the, uh, or the bulk of the plasma that was directed towards the earth here from a uh, couple different CMEs recently from the sun. Uh, that should be a nice little spike unless, unless, and it's a possibility it missed us. Um, but right now, let's see here. Let's go back over to one more station. I want to show you guys the uh, the forecast here that they had put, had put out. We're going to get a peak time here from the uh, Space Weather Prediction Center. I believe that was at about what is that? Around seven zero seven hundred or so, right? Well, it looks like around they changed it here. The the peak density right here the plasma is around zero four under z time that's when that uh, arrival of the cme is supposed to hit earth there in the green the sun in the yellow uh now it's possible here that it now well, let's take a look zero four hundred what time is it right now it's zero six forty seven so it's technically past that time Double check here. That is the right time, right? Yes, almost coming up on 0700. Um, Going to have to watch this. If this doesn't show up here in the next um, four or five hours or so, then I'm thinking maybe this missed us. Because, uh, you know, we, we got the speed, but we're missing that plasma, that, the density there of that plasma cloud that uh, we were expecting to see. Uh, KP index up around five right now, but the... It uh, looks like the BTBZ component here is not cooperating when it comes to allowing the auroras to uh, stir up. There's a uh, pretty northward point here in the uh, BZ component. That's the run times here in the red dots. So um, we'll have to watch that. I'll double check this back at the end of, uh, end of this update video. Uh, earthquake activity. Just go check this out real quick. See what we got going on. Bunch of activity here around Japan recently. Been watching the Nankai Trough. Uh, let's take a look, see if we got any newer activity there. Uh, it does look like there's one on the back side here of the morning activity. We had a 4.9 and a 4.5 in the section A of the Nankai Trough. There's a little 2.9 back behind that. That's normally a bad sign there when it's shallow crustal quakes. That's indicative there of a quite a bit of stress on that subduction zone. Uh, also, some newer activity there along the Izu Trench at 4.9. Some older activity from this morning up around Japan. Uh, Philippines region getting some activity as well. Looks like that's up around the uh, Manila Trench. We've just got a 4.5 coming in there, it looks like, at 9.23. So, I don't know why that's showing an older quake. That was about an hour or so ago. Uh, but either way, that's somewhat recent. Um, in the last couple hours, pretty good uptick going on there across the Philippines. Just a cluster of earthquake activity there today. Uh, there we go, getting some deeper movement quakes back there, there across the Tonga Trench. Nothing further new to report across New Zealand. Look at that trill. Oh, man, look at that. Look at these earthquakes there from north to south along the Pruchili Trench. All of these are raised off the globe, indicating some deep activity. That's... <laughs> It's a major subduction zone, and we get the deeper activity like that. That means strain is building up uh, upstream there. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the west coast here, see what we got going on for California activity. A couple earthquakes here along the coastline. Uh, one around Long Beach. It looks like that's on the Palos, uh, Palos Verdes Fault. I was down here last year. 
checking out that slide area, you know, where those homes are kind of slipping down there uh, into the Pacific. Beautiful area. Got some beautiful views. I can understand why people want to live out there. But uh, doing my studies, I found out that it was, you know, built on some uh, uh, some older landfill. And um, I don't know if it was landfill or maybe it was previous slide material. But, eh, you know, not a good scenario out there. I haven't been back down there since. Haven't heard anything new on it. But we do have a 1.6 coming in there uh, within the last hour. Uh, the rest of Southern California down here, a little spotty. Really nothing new to report down here. There's the activity on the Parkfield section this morning. No new activity to report here for now. Uh, the Bay Area pretty quiet. One earthquake in between the Hayward Fault and the Rogers Creek Fault. That's not good. That's a 1.8 from this morning, but I say that's not good because uh, scientifically they've proven here that this is linked to the Hayward Fault underneath this Bay Area. Uh, which would make this fault system uh, a pretty lengthy one there, right? So if this is able to produce a 6.9 now with that entirety there, with an extra uh, fault system being linked, uh, it's possible of seeing up to a mid-7 or so. A little earthquake there outside of Wallace. That's outside of Stockton, it looks like. A little 1.9, nothing big going on. There's a Clear Lake Volcanic Field. That's just geothermal operations. Uh, nothing new to report across Northern California for now. There's really nothing showing up. I kind of find that hard to believe, though. Let's check out the trimmer map here this evening. Cascadia. Slow slip events real quick. Got 39 of them. 39 epicenters of trimmer. Uh, a little bit here, a little bit there. This is the extreme southern end. It doesn't go much further than that. You're not going to see trimmer activity underneath Sacramento. Uh, it goes down to roughly... Uh, like I said, not too much further than where it's at right now. Uh, not a big deal. Not a whole lot kicking up there. But I'm really surprised there's no earthquake activity from uh, resulting from that trimmer activity today. I haven't really been looking at the seismograph stations. So I don't know what's been uh, coming into the area. But I just find it hard to believe that there's nothing being reported. And only one earthquake up here uh, up in the Washington region. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot going on there across the volcanoes, across the uh, Cascades this morning. So we'll, we'll double check that in the morning. Uh, Yellowstone, though, a couple earthquakes there around 11 o'clock today. We had a little event that came in and spit out a few earthquakes in a very short time period, literally within a minute or so of each other here. Nothing big. Some ones and it looks like a two or so. Uh, I do want to verify that and see if there's anything else going on there across Yellowstone. We'll check out the... Uh, the recorded seismograph stations here. Let's see if this one's working. YML should be working. There's those earthquakes. See that? It's just rather odd uh, to see a bunch of earthquake activity all of a sudden and then it just stops. <laughs> Pretty crazy, right? Uh, normally, you know, nothing big, but it's just, it's an odd little event when you see it happen. And there hasn't been an earthquake since then. That was about 11 o'clock this morning here, my time. Uh, the oil fields of Texas, not too much going on aside from a bunch of oil fields and the earthquakes. The rest of the country pretty quiet. Got a little activity down here across the Gulf of California. A couple of those from this morning. Uh, recent 4.4 uh, this afternoon time period. So watch for maybe a little bit of migration up north. We'll see if that takes place or not. Uh, Alaska pretty busy up here. Bunch of earthquake activity. Got, got about 58 earthquakes. That's a little bit on the elevated side here. Uh, a number of earthquakes above the 2.5 range. Uh, looks like the largest of 3.5. One earthquake here in the last hour. Um, pretty active. So watch the subduction zone out here. Normally when things are on the uptick out here, we do have to watch that uh, plate boundary. Yeah, see, look at this earthquake. Very close to the Manila Trench here. And one of the latest quakes this evening, uh, 4.5. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet, aside from a couple smaller quakes up here. Uh, and then the Mediterranean region's just still rocking and rolling with earthquakes out there around Turkey. The whole general area has been quite active. And when things kick up in Turkey, it seems like everything stirs up around it as well. That makes me think that there's something bigger brewing out here in terms of earthquake activity. 
All right, uh, Hawaii real quick. I know we're getting close to another eruption there at Kilauea Volcano, so I do want to double check in. Or check in, not double check in, but, you know, check in here. It's been a long day. It's 11 o'clock at night. I'm ready for bed. Um, Kilauea Volcano, no new update yet, so that tells me that there's not an eruption, but we will double check that. Let's go to the webcams here and uh, take a peek. Ooh, that's one of the current images there. Let's see. I guess this is going to be one of the best ones. That looks like it's getting ready to. I mean, there's some... Uh, I can't tell if that's reflection there off of the crater wall, maybe. Or if it's starting to throw up some, uh, some fountaining. It looks a little odd, but there's some glow down there. Uh, it's getting close. Let's go take a look at the uh, deformation data. See how that's looking. This is just a graph showing us the inflation there at the summit. That has gone back up. And uh, yeah, we could... Uh, looks like that could happen tonight sometime. So I wouldn't doubt it. We'll see an eruption here by morning. I'll have to report back on that uh, when that um, happens. Storm Prediction Center, not a lot of severe weather here going on across the area for now. We'll take a quick glance at the weather models. Pacific Northwest getting a little bit of rain. Northern California as well, but it's not quite reaching down here to the Chico area. It's kind of dissipating before it gets down here. Reading northward along the coast there, uh, Crescent City, Eureka area maybe. Getting some decent rain as well, but we got a little dry period here for the next few days. Uh, up until about midweek here, it looks like. Uh, we'll return back to some moisture there across the west coast. Now the GFS model, eh, it's well, that looks nice there on the 21st or so. That's a decent cutoff low pressure system bringing a lot of cold air behind that. That brings some uh, low snow levels there. Brings some rain to Southern California, but you know these uh, these storms here, they're a ways out, about a week out, just. They might change, and that's the GFS model here. The uh, ECM WF model shows us. I don't even know if it's going to go out that far. Just barely, just barely seeing that uh, approaching storm there off the west coast. We'll have to check back on that tomorrow and see what it looks like. Either way, we got some rain coming up here for the west coast once again. Uh, let's see. A real quick glance at space weather activity. Um, and we'll cover the flare activity. I forgot about that. 35% uh, chance here for an X flare. M flare 80. A C flare, of course, you know, we're well above the C flare level. C flare level. Um, no new X flare activity to report, although we're currently flaring right now with some C flare activity. Looks like from this sunspot area right here. <coughs> That's the one that produced a X 1.8 a couple days ago, along with a, I mean, a couple other M flares as well. Uh, currently flaring as C6.4. Uh, I do want to double check the magnetogram image, see what we have. 1929, here's the latest imagery. Uh, the one that's currently flaring with the C flare activity is right here. Still got quite a bit of complexity within that sunspot region, so I do think we could see some further X flare activity from that region. Also back down here, uh, across this area, looks fairly complex still. Two main areas to watch. You know, these are turning into the more Earth-directed view. So if we get a powerful X flare um, in this position right here, these are going to be almost certainly geo-effective if it produces a CME. So watch for that. I know everyone's staying up tonight. To, not everyone, but the Aurora watchers, hoping to see some auroras. You know, there's times where there's a good shot, and there's times where the forecast completely flops. This is supposed to be the forecast here tonight uh, for the KP index up around the 7. This is a view line here, central Oregon, you know, down to Nebraska and so on. Um, overhead in the yellow or in the uh, green and red. And, of course, Alaska, Canada, Greenland, Iceland, everyone, you know, I can only imagine what it looks like overhead. That'd be spectacular. But that's if everything cooperates here. Uh, real quick glance at the high-speed solar wind stream again you know we're way up there I'm gonna go to the official site and see if it's been updated 
Yeah, look at these last couple run times here. That's about as northward pointing as you can get. That will suppress anything that comes in. You won't see a peak of an aurora if it stays way up above the line like that. That is crazy looking. So we would need the run times to be south of this zero line, right? That would be a southward pointing tilt. Right now it's way north here with these last couple runs. That's ex way up there. Uh, even with the high-speed solar wind stream coming in at that fast, it uh, looks like the latest runs up above 800 at 838. That's pretty quick. If that was coming in when these run times were lower, uh, the BZ component, if it was really pointing south here, we'd be talking about an awesome-looking show. But um, right now it's pretty well closed up. I don't see the density hit that I'm looking for. It's supposed to be a pretty powerful hit. Uh, a quick but dense plasma uh, that was produced there from the sun with a CME eruption here a couple days ago. This is a pretty quick mover, but I don't see it. It's a good possibility that it will still come here in the next couple hours, but we're already past that time period where the Storm Prediction Center had already you know, forecasted when it would arrive. So may have missed us. Maybe not, though. We'll have to check back on that in the morning. I am not staying up for this. I'm just, I'm beat. I'm tired. But that M that uh, flare activity is going up here. Looks like we reached the M flare again. M1.0. A little bit of curvature right there. So that means it's probably peaked out. Looks like kind of like a longer duration event as well. Again, that's coming off of this area. Watch for some further X flare activity. It's very possible. And uh, these are definitely uh, rotating further into position here where it would be a direct shot there to the planet. Should, uh, you know, we get something interesting happening there. All right, seismograph stations there, pretty quiet. A couple small earthquakes on Anza Station. That's in Southern California. I don't really see anything else showing up there. So have yourself a wonderful evening. Friday made it, uh, well, not quite to the weekend yet, but we made it here to Friday tomorrow. Have a good one. We'll see you guys back out here in the morning.